After several large shop infrastructure projects and some techie ones, I'd like to get back into the swing of things with some good old woodworking. The goal is a nice cookbook stand for my and my wife's use, though she is quite a bit more skilled than I am. So here are my requirements. Look good. We'll see. Store easily. I guess it'll fold. And no hurt book. I'll soften the edges or something. Looking for inspiration, I went browsing for existing cookbook stands, hoping to find something that was along the lines of what I was already thinking. But I didn't find any. Most are a large board with a tiny lip. And one was close in that it was two parts that kind of slid into each other and would stand up and the book rested on those two arms with a back cross member. So I started fleshing out the design for what I had in mind, which was to use two parts that were hinged together. At first, I was going to use a couple of traditional hinges, but its throat was a little small. Then I remembered a set of barrel hinges I picked up a while back. These should work nicely for what I want, and look really cool. My approach was to go with a large L shape that should facilitate the vast array of cookbook sizes. With a few decorative curves that shouldn't affect the opening action. I reasoned through it in my head, but we'll see how far that gets me. For these parts, I built both the top and bottom arms... legs... in tandem. Taping the corresponding pieces together, cutting, and then sanding them into shape. Then I attached them with a half lap joint. I figured that this would be the best joinery I could use for this size and profile. Alright, let's give it a test before proceeding. Huh. Looks like those curves I added for decoration... ...with a few decorative curves that shouldn't affect the opening action... ...weren't in line with the back and are in the way. Well, at least we can learn a bit more from this prototype. These lower legs are way too long, and the overall size is a lot bigger than necessary. And the book's little butt hits the table surface if it's leaned too far back at all. All right, let's rush this bit. Okay, now that we're essentially back to the same point, here's some of the changes. First, it's a lot smaller in all dimensions, but roughly the same thickness. Second, I switched up the order of operations. This time, after gluing the arms together, I'm placing the hinges and then proceeding to cut curves into one of the two assemblies. Then I'll get close on the second, follow with a pattern router bit, and finish with sanding. Now that the hinges are in place, I'll true up the back faces and move on to one last fun addition. Ah, 
I've not done a whole lot of carving, and only recently begun to learn some of the basic terminology and techniques. Of course, the best first real project is going to be an extra tiny flower. So don't walk away from here taking this as a tutorial. That said, I'll at least speak on the approach that I'm taking as I understand it. I'm starting by cutting relief to whatever edges should appear above its surroundings. The background to the petals, the petals into... Hang on a second. The pistol, and any parts of the petals that should appear behind other petals. Next I'll define the edges more sharply, and attempt to sever fibers in grain directions that are least likely to break the short grain. I'd tell you how to do that, but I don't really know myself too well. Last, I'll do a little sanding and smoothing, and any final touches that I think are necessary. Honestly, I feel that's pretty decent. Tell me what flower you think I was going for in the comments. After oiling the stand a bit, it looks like a really nice, homey piece. And it works wonderfully. When I showed this to my wife, she informed me that this isn't actually what she had in mind. One of the flat, sturdy ones would have been preferred. I guess it would have been prudent of me to actually ask. I guess there's going to be part two down the line. Perhaps I'll do a larger and nicer carving. <laughs>